Wow, Ian, that was uh, quite the episode with Bram and another top three for me. How did you feel about it? You know, it was really cool. And um, I mean, I've, I realized halfway through that we um, have had two different podcast hosts. Well, if you c count other people who've, no, actually we've had three, four, blimey, a lot of our guests have actually been uh, have also got podcasts right and I sort of posed the question are there too many Bitcoin podcasts and I won't spoil uh, what Graham said but um, yeah it was a great episode it went very philosophical which is obviously my cup of tea I, I like going down this sort of deep uh, dive with down this rabbit hole and um, it's a nice guy uh, we had a nice conversation um, we even stopped recording we continued having the conversation offline as well and it's a shame that we didn't have a lot of that conversation uh, in the recording but um, as with any Bitcoiner you meet you just sort of go off on this tangent of uh, Bitcoin and, and how it can fix the world how about you Joel? Uh, what I really like is uh, Bram has a very I mean I wouldn't say a very similar background to what I did but a lot of the stuff he worked Worked in like I used to write about and you know work in as well somehow so it was cool to see to have a touch point with him but then different perspectives and uh, yeah just generally his whole approach about how he thinks about these different things I think it's definitely it's a deep thinking episode but it's a good one mm. and I don't want to keep uh, people waiting for uh, this rabbit hole story with Bram. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Rabbit Hole Story. And today we have uh, a fellow European guest. We finally managed to get more Europeans onto the show. Yeah. And we're expanding. Uh, Bram, how has your day been so far? Yeah, good, man. I actually I had a great uh, breakfast with a fellow Bitcoiner friend at the beach. We live near the beach. And it's just nice to have like a conversation and to you know, kind of check your own thoughts with someone else who's like thinking in a similar way, right? Like we, we joked this morning that I think once you are really into Bitcoin and, and you are still like, I'm in Bitcoin for 10 years, I'm still learning today, right? And I think that's everyone's experience. But sometimes you end up somewhere, let's say if you zoom out three levels and you take three exits to the right and you're like, hmm, interesting i ended up here like am i crazy or does it make sense like it's nice to have a conversation with someone just to kind of like check your own thinking you know and uh so we always have like a very lively lively discussion so that, that was a great start uh, and i had some calls and now uh now i'm here with you guys so yeah mate uh, did you day. have steak for breakfast then seeing as that you were having uh, breakfast with a fellow Bitcoin, no but right? I, I i did i did uh, i did fast today so i only had uh, like a like a water actually. oh so do you, do you do like the intermittent fasting thing or yeah um... i try i try like yeah, uh, yeah. I, I would love to do it more but i uh i am uh i'm not a niacin flusher i'm not a steak for breakfast guy i'm i'm more into the fasting <laughs> yeah. yeah but mate you're absolutely right it's it's good to sort of like check your understanding and check where you are down this rabbit hole right um because sometimes you you can go down various um warrens within this network of what is bitcoin mm. and like you said you're always learning something new and sometimes i think i've got a good grasp of how i understand it but as i evolve into the space more and more and i start hearing other people other guests like yourself who come on and they they give me their perspectives as well it expands my not only my knowledge but it expands my understanding of my own perspective and it's a good way to sort of check uh, where I'm at within that and it's nice to have this network of people within Bitcoin all over the world um, and it's a privilege to have people like yourself on and all the guests that come on because it helps me sort of um, navigate through this complex uh, rabbit hole that is Bitcoin. Um, so Bram, thank you so much for joining us. Um, well, thanks Bram for the invite the, also. Mate, it's <laughs> our absolute honor and pleasure, so thank you. And um, what we are obviously all about is people's rabbit hole uh, story and how they first discovered Bitcoin, um, what it is that they're doing now in this space, and um, what is it that um, uh, Bitcoin brings into their life. So. Mm. Bram, I think um, we might as well just kick off with your origin story around Bitcoin and how it's how it's working for you now. Yeah, yeah, that's why I, I would love to come on because I think I have a fun story. At least I think it's fun. Uh, like ten years, ten years. So I'm I'm in Bitcoin ten years. Like ten years ago, when I was almost graduating from from my college, I discovered a, a, a video on Vimeo. I can send it to you later so you can link to it. I think it's something called Bitcoin Explained, something like like. Something like that. And I came across it. I think it's like a 10-minute-ish 10, 10 video. Um, and I've always been like 
into the internet and business and like I, I i see the future of the internet i love all the interconnectedness like the world becomes smaller the information becomes democratized like all these things and so when i saw that video i i think my first like look at it was kind of like what jack dorsey also says like the, the internet needs a currency just as you know free as the internet is and connected as the internet is so that was kind of like my 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 first angle on it like how i how i looked at it and I don't remember like what I did immediately after that, but slowly I had some other friends. I, sh I shared it and we got into kind of like day trading. We started buying it. We looked at it um, obviously with the idea to have more euros and well, stuff like that. So I always say I bought at $400 or three, three, $400. I sold everything at 4,000. So, you know, uh, th that's how it, that's how it goes. I now have less than I had then. That's also how it goes. Right. Um, but we were always kind of like looking at as to like how how and where can we acquire it like we we couldn't buy like i was a student i didn't have a uh, uh well i had a credit card not another high limit we had paypal that was difficult there was no like local debit p p service we could use so at one point we were on uh, we were trading on btce.com i don't know if you remember that's like an old chinese I think it was Chinese exchange and they had so many already so many coins tokens whatever and at one point I um saw that they had they had a BTC I think it was B BTC uh well it was BTC pair with something else but that token had a pair with the Linden dollar I don't know if you know what the Linden dollar is it's the currency no, in second on, life it's the currency in second life okay in the game second life okay and yeah so in the game Second Life, you, we could actually buy the tokens with a credit card. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try that out. So I downloaded Second Life and I made a character, etc. And you could go to an ATM in Second Life, pay with your credit card, and get the the Linden dollars. So my my idea was, okay, I get the Linden dollars because then I can buy with my credit card, and then I will trade it, and then I will trade it again, and then I'll have Bitcoin. But if I eventually ended up with buying, I think I tried to start with like a hundred dollars in or euros in Linden dollars. And then I traded and traded again. And then I had 60 euros worth of Bitcoin. So I had like a 40% uh, fees, fees and loss in between. But yeah, that was just a really fun phase to just figure out what is this, you know, and we were sending like Bitcoin to each other. No clue what like the blockchain Explorer page even represented, like all the gas stuff and like, what, what does the, all this stuff even mean? So I think that was like my second step, just diving a bit more into understanding how it works. What is a what you know? What is a private key, public key, the hashes, and all that stuff. So the start was really like this kind of like technical angle. I'd say I'm not super technical. Like eventually, I I, I think I understand it technically for like eighty percent or something. But that was kind of like the the first part, like just to understand like what it is. And I, even like two weeks ago, I had a revelation and that's the fun part, I think, of the rabbit hole that like the whole blockchain now is like 500-ish gigabytes and it's just text, which is wild. You know, like it's just, it's 500 gigabytes of text, which through the different, you know, tools and viewers and, um, you know, analytics tools, whatever, you can decipher what happened in the real world, basically, between mm -hmm. people and entities, you know. And that's, for me, even though, you know, again, 10 years ago, I understood that, you know, it was text and text and text. Like two weeks ago, I was like, damn, this is so, it's crazy. And anyone can see this, you know. And, and that's, yeah, what I still love about Bitcoin, that even though you think you understand something, that at one point something else clicks and then you're like, wow, this is such... It's so amazing, you know, and then when I see people talk about, you know, the, the federal bank in America has never been audited, like it strengthens my belief in that one system is provably better than than the other, you know. And so, um, yeah, this is really, I think, the start of my story. And then, of course, yeah, I sold at like 4K. I got like out, I think kind of like, I, I don't know the period, but I kind of got back in like 2017, 18 ish where i discovered like ethereum uh yeah i did the ico stuff i did the nft stuff uh i also did the bitcoin stuff eventually sold everything and and i'm i'm 
I'm like 90% net worth <laughs> in Bitcoin now. But like uh, three, I think yeah, since since COVID or something, I've been really diving more into like all the finance and economics kind of dimensions of Bitcoin because that is totally not my background. And I understand from my professional life in like digital businesses and startups, you know, like you can build anything, but if you don't understand the problem or the need that you're solving, then it doesn't really matter what you build. And I think for most people, understanding Bitcoin, um, if we want to grow it bigger and help people see how it could improve their life, we need to talk more about the problem. And I think the problem is really around finance world, understanding of economics, what is money and all these all these things. So um, I dove into that, still learning. Last week, I talked to James Lavish, which was amazing, like wow. <laughs> super fun to to meet him and just uh yeah also thank someone you know for teaching me stuff and i yeah that's that's in general what i love about the internet that we can connect with anyone you can share any information you can teach anything you want and uh yeah a few months ago i thought okay how can i contribute to bitcoin let's let's start another podcast <laughs> and that's uh yeah where the my uh, my my podcast bitcoin for millennials came from to just hopefully help my fellow you know, generational peers see it because I have a lot of conversations, you know, in real life. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's hard to, well, to show people the threads that they can pull on, you know, like everyone is different. So I'm still trying to figure out how to trigger different people into, you know, starting their own rabbit hole, basically. Yeah. And uh, just two remarks on what you said previously, that everything is basically just text. Yeah. Well, Because I'm just, I'm like, and I'm very proud of this. I'm like the last year on millennial and not Gen Z. So like I can safely <laughs> say I'm the cooler generation, at least in my opinion, and not like the weird TikTok. Don't upset the Gen zombies. Z's now, Joel. Oh, oh, come, come on. on. They're also snowflakes. They should, they should grow up. Um, <laughs> but the funny thing is whenever I explain it to my a little bit older friends, so like between 30, 35, um, they all go like, yeah, but you know, it's money. And like, I don't want to be interested in money. And I usually just go, it's a giant Excel spreadsheet. I know you all work in consulting and banking and startups, so you yeah. love Excel, right? Um, and everyone sees it. And if person A pays person B, you know, we can all verify it. And if you actually mm. break the rules, you don't get access to the Excel. That's sort of how I usually yeah. start and then evolve into yeah, yeah, things. Yeah. Um, and if you think about it, I think I've never actually seen a technology or an ecosystem where you can come in and break it down as simple as this. Because yes, you can like break down AI, for example, super simply, but you always come up with like, oh, you know, there's like generative AI and LLMs and these kind of things. And, you know, you have code and shit. Um, and with Bitcoin, it's just like flat out, like this is the basic stuff. This is a bit more complicated. And if you actually want to like really go down, like this is the fucked up part, which we need to fix now. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you kind of have these evolvements. But um, when I was doing the research for the episode today, I basically found out that you um, were involved or sort of founded Startup Stash, and yes. that was sort of your previous life. Mm. Have you always been involved in startups? And if so, what are sort of the comparisons you see between that world and the Bitcoin world? Because it, sometimes it feels like a giant startup if you are in the Bitcoin bubble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, definitely. <laughs> no, no. It's, it's kind of what I just um, mentioned, you know, like the, in in like the... I kind of call it like new new business ideas world <laughs> where I have been in for the past 10 years and where I currently also help help uh, entrepreneurs and companies really in kind of like the zero to one stage where for me zero is I have an idea like everyone has dozens of ideas right and one is kind of like this is not an idea I actually should, should pursue like that's um, what I'm currently building products for and also working uh, with, with entrepreneurs and companies on and I think for me the comparison is you know, if you don't understand the problem, then why why would you even see a possible solution, right? And so I think people like us, like people who see uh, Bitcoin, you know, there's a lot of people that talk about uh, all the technical stuff and the ordinals and stuff like I I'm I'm totally not into that because it's kind of like, oh, there's a tech and we can do all this stuff and we should talk about that, but there's a shit ton of people that have no clue about the problem that that we are solving right and even again like from my own story when i was 30 i worked at a bank in the innovation department in a bank i had a mortgage and i had a colleague to tell me did you know that the money in the bank is not yours and i said well, sorry what 
and then we had lunch for an hour and he explained to me you know fractional reserve banking and that you know you basically when you put the money in the bank you loan it to the bank they take all the risk they take all the rewards and you know if it goes right you don't see any reward if it goes wrong then eventually through whatever way even the bank insurance stuff and blah, blah blah you know you you get the bill so it's a very bad it's a very bad deal and even if you go to the bank they also don't have your money or they ask you why do you want to use your money you know so he explained that all to me and i was like wow i'm an idiot like i'm participating in a system that i have no clue about like how how it works and so i think that going down that part of the rabbit hole more like finance and economics again like that just really strengthened my initial understanding of what bitcoin could be and solve and so i think the comparison is you know we should talk more and educate more about the problem and you know logical fallacies or the perverse incentives that people that you know are close to money creation have and all these things like for me it's way more kind of like psychological philosophical type-ish conversations that we should have you know with challenging personal uh, beliefs and yeah kind of like in a sense productizing apparently the growth mindset that we have you know because we we unlearned stuff and we challenged ourselves like i i think that is more important than the thing because if you understand the problem you will later understand that there's only one thing and this is a i think a hyperbolical <laughs> statement but there is only one thing bitcoin is not crypto crypto is everything that came after bitcoin right and previously i sent people like links from save dean and like his book and you know like who's going to read 300 pages so now i sent them the fidelity uh bitcoin revisited uh, report of 23 pages and i say you know like you know me you you know how how investigative i am and and actually very risk averse and cautious and this is exactly why i bitcoin please read these 23 pages and understand who says this the second largest uh, investment firm in the world and understand that anything they publish before they publish it has gone through multiple layers of very highly educated people that need to protect the legal entity that is this company and then read it and once you read bitcoin is akin to fire and the wheel and just put it in that perspective so that is now how i try to put people on to actually reading it right they have to read it and then put those pieces together but because of well again that experience in the bank like I, I was working in innovation we had like different projects and we were sometimes we were very enthusiastic about something and then i went to legal somewhere in a corner on the 10th uh, floor and and there would be a lady and they, she would be like well who are you and i said well i have a que i have a question and her answer would always be no right so just think about it from that perspective right whatever they say it's signed off by multiple people, multiple, right? And so also when Larry Fink, whatever you think of BlackRock and all the other stuff they do, which is legit, legitimately bad. Mm. Once he says Bitcoin can transcend currencies, just think about that is not his opinion, okay? It's a company statement. So what do you say to people who say there are too many Bitcoin podcasts? What 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 what's your um, yeah, that's, response to that? That, that's, that's a fun that statement. I thought about that too. Like, should I have another podcast? Like, should I start another podcast? Uh, that's why I gave it the angle for millennials, right? So I think okay, I niche it down a bit, but still a big group. And I think the millennial generation is the biggest one to actually have some benefit of this, right? Like the boomers had a lot of benefits without doing a lot, actually. Like it's just. They were kind of lucky. I think we are also lucky. We we grew up in the best time ever to grow up from any person who ever existed, especially in the Western world, right? Like zero problems, right? Yes, some people have personal stuff and whatever, but in the bigger picture, you know, easy life, really. And and so I think Gen Z has it a bit harder. Um, but we also grew up in in a, in a phase where you know we we are we see the effects of the of the of the of the fiat fuckery basically the debasement of the currency like i just tweeted today there's a video of this woman 
she's 24, so she's Gen Z. She has a master's degree. She's a teacher. She calculated like I, I make $16 an hour and I can't afford to live on my own. Like how, like I'm lucky that I can live on my own. So I'm better off, but it's, it's sad, man. Like that's, uh, yeah. So, so that's bad. And so why I started another podcast is once I heard someone say, and I, I love that, like Bitcoin is not a zero sum game. Like this is, this is a value exchange. Like I'm, I help you, you help me. It's a mutual beneficial engagement. Right. And yeah, I love talking to Bitcoiners. So I thought, yeah, why not? I think we need more education. I, th I think you, I, once you really understand that 0.1% of all people understand Bitcoin, then of course we need another podcast. It doesn't matter what the entry point of who, whoever new to Bitcoin is. Like if you can create that, and, and that's also, I think, if I get one message from someone who said, you, 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 you showed me why I should Bitcoin, then it's more than enough. Like, uh, Joel, what's your response to that question? Um, you mean why we do why we're podcasting while we're in it? Or no, no. Uh, what would you say to people that say there are too many Bitcoin, Bitcoin podcasts? Oh, they're not enough. I mean, think about how many. Um... Shit! Now I got to be political correct. Okay, let's think <laughs> about how many. <laughs> After five minutes, right? Or no? Yeah, yeah do you? I can. I can say. I can already <laughs> say fuck. Um... <laughs> no. Um... Think about how many of these relationship, like, I don't know, improve your life podcasts that are out there. Just open Spotify. There are literally thousands of them. And they all say the same shit. Like, they all plug a, a product or a service at the end. So it's not really high quality. But people listen to it because they want to find out how to improve their life. And I think, especially with the situation we see now, where suddenly inflation is, you know, you hear it left, right, and center for um, a lot of different parts of society uh, people realize like bram said you know i work 16 make 16 bucks an hour i can't live on my own i have to live like two hours outside of a big city if i want to live near a big city or i basically live on a farm and, and be happy with this so all of these things eventually lead them to finding avenues to get out of the system um, or get out of that um, particular system i'm not talking about like matrix and blue pill and red pill and all that stuff um so yeah, if they find Bitcoin and they have, you know, a podcast with like um, Pedro, who's who's interviewing a lot of big Bitcoin names, they have someone like Bram, who's um, European based in the Netherlands, um, and they maybe have two weird guys in London who, you know, don't know how to do an intro and outro, but they somehow make it stick. Um, <laughs> they'll find the show. So you know, that's that's the idea behind, you know, contributing value. And if you think about the earlier internet days. That's like how services we use these days came about. Two dudes met and they were like, shit, this is a problem. We need to fix it. Let's put something out there. And by the powers of three meter large cables somewhere in the ocean, it became available for everyone. Yeah. So well, why should, should, that, why should that be bad? <laughs> like, I also love, I love how many like paradoxes or like contrasting things there are in Bitcoin, right? Like, because... People would say like, oh, you just have a Bitcoin podcast to shill Bitcoin. So it goes up and you become rich and blah, blah, blah. For me, it genuinely feels like something altruistic, right? Like I, I know I'm good. I don't care if someone else buy, buys Bitcoin or not. Like I know that I see it. I know that I, I put in the work. Like I, I don't have to be convinced anymore. I'm just having fun learning more, you know, like it. So, and one of the things, and then I'll finish that thought, like one of the things I once read uh, was a tweet from someone who says, like, if you even remotely believe that Bitcoin, like Bitcoin is a zero or everything thing, right? It's there's the in-between does not exist. That's really what I think. And so if you are even remotely convinced that it will not be zero, you have to have a seat in the stadium for when it happens, right? Bef for when... Bitcoin is really legitimized as an asset and enough people understand that this is the best store value asset ever to be discovered, that it makes all our lives much better, that it helps us from trusting other humans that are just as untrustable as we cannot trust ourselves, right? Like it, it will make everything better. So if you believe that, then you have to have a seat in the stadium. You have to walk the talk. Like walk the talk is, is the ethos, right? Like anyone who has a critique on Bitcoin, show me your short position, show me your, whatever. like do it. And so the, 
th th that walk the talk thing I find fascinating. Like I, I saw that and I was like, okay, I need a seat in the stadium. I just like, that is just <laughs> how, it, how it works, I think. And now that I'm sitting in the stadium and peop when people say, oh, you're only shilling Bitcoin and it goes up. I think like, no, I'm, I'm trying to spread love, you know, to my friends. Like, I love you. You, I am you. We were, we are in the system. We never thought about the system or how it works. There's other people who do understand how it works. And it's, you know, the George uh, Carlyle, Carl, Carlyle thing, you know, it's mm -hmm. a big fat club and you're not in it. Like, that's true you, uh, because you cannot individually understand that when you say, well, if I would be in that position, I would never do that. You know, that's just not true. Just acknowledge that you would exploit it as well. Like that is just a reality. Like it, once you have a child, you will see that the child fi fights for its own preservation and that never stops in a person, right? So if I can exploit a system that you two are also part of for my own benefit, I will do it. That's just the nature. That, that, that's nothing morality or nothing. It's just how it works. And once you accept that, then uh, you just want to help all these other people because I'm already sitting in the stadium. Like I just want the stadium mm. to be bigger and more people in it, right? So, but when I say that, like it's an altruistic thing, like then again, you get people who say like, yeah, of course, of course he would say that because he's shilling the thing. And then I think like, yeah, whatever. Like then, then it's kind of done, you know? Then I think like, yeah. well, you want to understand or try or... You know, good luck, Chuck. That's what I did think. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, it's to everyone of at their own um, personal situations. Like I know, this is actually something when you said before that you have these different outtakes and perspectives in Bitcoin. This is something I fucking hate if I'm on Bitcoin Twitter. Like hodl till you die. Yeah, and what? You're not gonna spend the most hard asset on planet Earth. Like at one point, you have to like either spend it to buy stuff, spend it to, I don't know, support people, think about yeah. investing into startup, whatever. Um, and they're legit people who, you know, use Bitcoin in a different way. Uh, and funnily enough, this is actually the use case which helped me orange pill a lot of people. So I just came back from El Salvador and during my stay in El Salvador, I got about 200 WhatsApps like, are you safe? Have you been killed? <laughs> like, like, yeah, I've been killed and I'm messaging, you know, from beyond the grave, you know, like yeah. uh, it works out. But um, when I sort of explained, oh, you know, it's pretty cool. I've been to this mountain town where 25,000 people live. They all use Bitcoin. They're piss poor. Now they have a bank account. They never had one before. And uh, someone there knows someone in Peru. And then the other guy often backtracks to like uh, Guatemala. So like, you know, it's weird how these situations happen and how these relationships come about. And they went like, this is all because of Bitcoin. And I go, yeah, and this is the idea behind it. It's not... Yeah. It's obviously the speculation stuff for us over here, but for them, it's legit money or a way to actually be connected to the modern world as we know it. Um, so I find if you actually get a seat in the stadium and you see this different perspective, you do really sit at that stadium in awe and look around and go like, holy shit, there's so much we can do and so many people we can help in their own ways. Um, and if you don't get that, I think you'll never find something else in your life that mm. has actually any meaning to you or fulfillment. Yeah. I, I agree. And I think back to why I started another podcast is at one point I also thought I'm going to talk about this for the next 40 years. So why not share the conversations, <laughs> you know? So yeah, that's, uh, and that's also it. Like you cannot unsee it. The idea will never die. It will never stop. Like it's an unstoppable thing. Right. And, um, you you now see currently see banks like closing the doors in well in England I think it, it was Citibank who closed uh, you know like deposits to Coinbase and stuff. For me, it only legitimizes what this is, and 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 that's why we have to talk more about how a, how the current financial system works and and also accept that a lot of people just as I didn't understand it before just don't understand it like they don't, and so that is way more important than only like only talking about uh bitcoin that's again why i said like more more about the problem and going back to my um are there too many bitcoin podcasts question um that's exactly what i would uh respond is that once you see it you can't unsee it and you're incentivized to sort of try and get your message out there as to how valuable bitcoin is and how, how it can benefit other people and your your podcast um bitcoin for millennials obviously um is sort of 
tailored towards uh, signaling towards millennials, right? And our podcast uh, will resonate with a different audience. Yes. Um, and other Bitcoin podcasts elsewhere across the globe might sort of resonate with other people. And it depends on who's hosting and the, the guests they have on. Something's going to get out there where somebody might hear it and it might sort of spark some curiosity for them to sort of look more into it. So I think the more Bitcoin podcasts there are out there, the better. And going back to uh, Dadu's episode, um, our previous um, episode, um, when we were speaking to him, because he's uh, the host of the Bitcoin Source podcast, and he was saying that, you know, he, he, he can reach an audience that maybe we can't. And also, it does incentivize some sort of competitiveness and competition in a, a free market. So it almost sort of live in... Um, through the ethos of, of Bitcoin and, and trying to find the value in people's messages and sort of tap into yeah. our audience and, and how it sort of um, spreads the signal of Bitcoin as well. So, yeah, it's, um, I don't think there can ever be too many Bitcoin podcasts, really, um, because, you know, it's um, spreading value and obviously all roads lead back to Bitcoin, right? So whatever you want to talk about, whatever topic you want to discuss, you can bring that back to Bitcoin somehow. Um, so whatever your political beliefs might be, whatever, whatever your um, ethos is, um, it's still relevant to, to the principles of Bitcoin in a way as well. No, I agree. I think the, the connectedness is more about understanding that someone else did the same work that you did. You know, that's what you connect on. And then it doesn't really matter if someone believes in God or not or in Allah or whatever. That, that's so irrelevant. It's so irrelevant. Like that is just, you understand that that is a certain personal perception of, you know, or their, their, their current view on the world. And that's totally fine. But you know, they are real to a certain degree because they did the same type of work. And that's what I love, uh, what I love about it. Like, I, I think today, even like I, I retweeted this tweet from um, um, Mitchell uh, Askew is in my latest uh, episode. And like, he believes in uh, Jesus Christ, etc. Like, no, totally fine. Like, I don't, uh, and I tweeted, like, I grew up being an agnostic or an atheist even, but actually true Bitcoin, I didn't add that to the tweet. But, you know, once you understand that if you engineer a system that can improve people's lives right that's kind of how i view bitcoin as a system it's a protocol it's just a thing it's an idea right it's just a thing that exists and once people understand what the thing is they can apply it to their life and then they can join or not and but once they join they need to follow the rules of the system or else they cannot um uh, profit or get value from the system right and so thinking in systems really helped me also to see other systems and i'm really into like uh, astrology astronomy like just the, the you know space and life and how uh, uh you know everything is math basically and at one point it just hit me like this life and the universe and everything from food to nature to our body to you know it's all a system this is not this is not random and and once you see a system then the only logical conclusion is that a system is engineered like a random system that works so perfectly you know, we can talk about different dimensions. We can talk about from the weather and the trees to how certain roots connect with receptors in the body, like shit like that. So a system is engineered. So there must be someone who, in something or somewhat that engineered it, right? And so I think it's really, I find it very interesting to realize that without thinking, I've, I adopted some sort of agnostic, atheistic type mindset. But once I started thinking, I moved away from that, right? Like, and I don't believe in Jesus Christ, but I now do believe that we live in something that was created, like by who I have no clue. But that's a totally different view of something that I just viewed differently before. And I think that is also, I, I find it fun. I find it fun to challenge myself. Like I, I know that I don't know everything, right? And that's, that's the fun of life in a sense. And that other people can show you that as well. Like you don't have to agree, but there is something in that, idea of something from someone else that you are not seeing and that i i always find very interesting right because you are not right and and joel is not right and you know andrew is not right like it's just our own perception or at, at, at a moment in time as well right so i think that's just i i, I love that actually about bitcoin that 
it actually uh, makes your mind way more open. <laughs> it really, sense. really does. Yeah, it yeah. does expand your imagination and it opens up your mind to different concepts and ideas. Because like you alluded to earlier, Bitcoin makes you re think everything and question everything again through a Bitcoin lens. And um, obviously that does um, eventually come to the question of your own personal beliefs, whether it be religious or otherwise. And it reminds me of a conversation we had with Knut on, on the podcast, um, uh, author of uh, Everything Divided by 21 Million. And uh, he was saying, that, and in, the, in his book as well, he was saying that basically everything is just information, right? Um, at the end of the day, it's just we are information, everything around us is information and it, it kind of ties into the whole um, idea of Bitcoin and, and how it's come about. And he, he, he thinks that, and he, he talks about Bitcoin being more of a discovery rather than yes. an invention. Um, and it's just an evolution into our understanding of our part in the universe. So it's quite a fascinating concept um, and something I sort of um, think about quite a lot when I'm diving deep down the, the Bitcoin rabbit hole, which is all day, every day. <laughs> you can't yeah. escape you can't escape um sort of uh, bringing bitcoin in every aspect of your life uh in some way and um you just recently had an interview uh with uh, jeff booth right and uh, i think you kind of touched on something similar there in your conversation with him right about um understanding um sort of how bitcoin can bring us into an abundant world and 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 how it can sort of elevate us somehow um how did you find that conversation with jeff and did you come away um with anything uh new um in your understanding towards bitcoin yes what i love about jeff is that you know it i find myself a very like investigative person right like i like to understand things like even even if a guy would come to my house like a like a plumber or a carpenter or whatever like i just love to understand what they do like not to control but just to understand like i like to like he can they can do something that i can't so i think that's an opportunity to to learn basically and you know when you talk to someone like jeff who i think has a big has a great skill in like zooming out and also yeah putting things in in certain contexts and perspectives like it challenges you to your own thinking so i asked him a question about uh something about the future of bitcoin like how is it going to evolve and he says the future I, he said like the future is now like there's nothing you have to wait for like you can just and, and it's funny because i was already kind of there so what when, when i really went like more into bitcoin was after the bank the conversation at the bank and I just realized, like, I have my, the rewards of the energy that I expended to others. I have that in a system, you know, the money. But there's provably another system, where, uh, a system that's provably better where I should store it. So I don't see bit, getting Bitcoin as buying Bitcoin. No, I see it as just moving the energy, the money energy that I own into another place, right? So I was actually already there when Jeff Booth said, well, you can already do that now. Like you don't have to wait for anything, right? Like you can get out of the old system or if you understand how that system works and then it is, that it is provably not beneficial, been beneficial for you, which is not an opinion like, okay, do the work and understand how it works. And then this is your conclusion. It's not my opinion. Well, once you see that, you, you can move, you can move to the system. And then I thought that's what I already did <laughs> years ago. You know, so it's, 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 it's funny to get some sort of like confirmation in your own thinking, but from like another person. And I do think you need that, right? You need to, although sometimes people say like, it's a bad thing to get validation from others. Yes, but not when you, yes, based on emotion, if, if, if like, like validating an emotion with someone else, that, that doesn't make any sense. Right. But validating a, a, a a certain way of thinking and like a point where you ended up and think like, okay, this is what I think. This is what I see now, not what I, what my opinion is this. I see this now and I should act on it. Like how can I validate if, if I ended up in the right place, you know? So it's nice mm -hmm. to get that from someone else who totally looks at it in a, in a different way. And I, I, yeah, that's, that's really what I well, It's part of the there. don't trust verify ethos, right? You know, you've you got an understanding of something, you want to check it against other people's understanding. Um, so I think, you know, uh, we need to do a lot of um, 
checking our understanding of the thing and, and verifying our understanding of it and get different perspectives from different people. And it's nice sort of like knowing that you're on the right track, if you like, uh, with, with like, you know, a majority of people might be thinking along the same lines as you. Yeah. It helps you sort of, um, it helps you understand where in this rabbit hole you are. Exactly. Uh, where it's have you kind taken of like, a which wrong... level yeah. am I? Which exit did I take? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or, or have you 100%. taken a wrong turn somewhere, right? And <laughs> yeah. you're sort of down the wrong path. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it's it's really good sort of getting that verification so, back. Hang on a minute. Is there a Google Maps for the rabbit holes, what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> if there is, someone needs to build an app for that. <laughs> yeah, but it's like you, you also, I think, want to learn more. Like, I... Um, I actually, I, I scheduled a recording date with Eric Kaysen. Uh, yeah, that guy, man, when he talks, my mind just goes, you know, and, and I don't understand everything, but I want to know, right? Like it inspires me. Like I want to talk to this person. I want him to say things that make me uncomfortable or challenge myself, right? Like I think that is just the kind of, like principle or like like point where I operate from uh, again like just the knowing that you don't know everything and that that is totally okay and that it's also fun and interesting and um you know intellectually rewarding if you look if if you go towards those boundaries for what you know like more into the uncomfortable like Eric I think brands himself as a like a a a, a real anarchist like I, when I say that I think like I'm not an anarchist but I don't know, maybe I am when, <laughs> when I talk to him for an hour, you know, like you, you don't know what you don't know. Right. And, and other people see, see uh, the world from a different point of view. So that's just in general, just, I, I find it very rewarding and I, um, yeah, like I would do that for free. I'm doing it for free, you know, and it's just uh, fun. Yeah. What I find interesting, um, or what I observe and I might be wrong in my observations, um, but Bitcoin Twitter, if you want to call it that, um, I think people are still calling it Bitcoin Twitter, despite the rebranding efforts of Elon Musk. Um, but what I sometimes feel is that people, they're, they're, they're Bitcoiners and um, I'm not going to ever sort of say, oh, you're never a Bitcoiner because that's not my place to ever say to somebody, oh, you're not really a Bitcoiner. But obviously um, I see um, when we when we're talking about Bitcoin makes you question everything and rethink everything. Um, sometimes I think people hold on too tightly to their legacy mindset. Um, once they've been on and they're in the rabbit hole, sometimes they're, they're still tethered to their ideologies of, of the past in a way. And, and it takes a lot of energy and it takes a lot of reflection. Um, and it, it, it quite, Bitcoin forced me to be open-minded and sort of like try and sort of see things through different lenses. But I, I feel that some people hold on to something um, and I understand why, because it's, you know, part of their identity is who they have understood themselves to be in the world. And it's hard to sort of disentangle yourself away from that in some way. But but for me, um, you know, I, I suppose before Bitcoin, I sort of potentially identified as sort of more progressive, um, uh, left leaning person. Uh, but now I'm in Bitcoin, I'm sort of hearing the different narratives, I'm allowing myself to sort of in, uh, take on different perspectives. And it's shifted um, my mindset quite significantly. And I'm not sort of claiming to be left or right or center, because I think we need to find different language in a way to sort of um, figure out where we are um, in the world. And I think um i'm rambling at the moment but I've, i'm wondering if no, it's triggered totally, any i have any exactly thoughts the same you. i 100 percent agree <laughs> mm. yeah no, I've, i i well the the example that i just gave right like growing up thinking i was an atheist or agnostic or whatever for me same i i, I feel like um well there were just elections in my country right like uh, i think two three months ago i wrote down a list and i called it things i find important like who who should i vote for and I wrote stuff down and on some things I'm pretty left, I'd say. And on some things I'm pretty right. And on some things I'm in the middle and are like, you know, maybe I don't know enough about it or I don't really care or, you know, it'll be whatever. There's no one that I can vote for, right? <laughs> and Which is also a vote. Yeah, but I think you, do, you, you should 
fault, but uh, well, that's another conversation. But yeah, like it, it's, it, uh, yeah, my conclusion, I, and I also kind of find it sad, right? Like there mm -hmm. is no, there is no one truth, at least. Well, we can go into the topic of Bitcoin is the ultimate engineer truth, but mm. you know, there is no, there is no like who who knows it all, right? If if you don't know anything, should one person that has a certain um, position in hierarchy and power, why why do they know more? Like why mm. why, why are they more capable of doing it? Well, yes, maybe capable in certain skills and stuff, but they're still human. Everyone has limited time. Everyone has an ego. Everyone has internal struggle. Everyone has. You know what? What everyone has something, right? So I, 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 and what Ian just said, like I have the same journey, right? I, I also feel like I was more on the left than what I actually believe. So I'm a bit more to the right, but I'm also I, I think I'm like nuanced in the middle, and sometimes more left and sometimes more right. You know, and and eventually, I don't know. Like my conclusion is kind of is like, yeah, that 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 is how the world works. There's no. Mm. Yes, there's there's you know provable you know good and bad stuff and you know but it's not it, everything is a balance and I love uh, oh, I don't have the book here but I bought I love these hermetic principles I don't know if you know about that like uh, as above so below you know everything is a polarity and all these things like there are na laws of nature that were here way before we <laughs> the humans were here and I think we should understand that more you know the the, yeah. the um, i don't know what the english word is but i feel like a lot of people just because we have some sort of prosperity or there's money or and stuff like that like we can what's the word in your native uh, language it's maakbaarheid like you can you oh can... it's um that's actually similar to um yeah well i will google it it's uh uh in in english but i feel that that it says manufacturability, <laughs> but like that we can manufacture nature or and right. nature as in the trees and the ecosystem, mm -hmm. blah, but also our human nature and that we can go against it just because we can buy a thing or go somewhere or, or pay for a service that helps us go against that. But that, yeah, that is, I, I'm, I'm not, um, I'm trying to regain my my train of thought, but like that that is what I'm more into personally. Like I I think that is just a really interesting journey. Like there is a way that the system of the world, so not the people, so just the whole ecosystem and nature and the stars and whatever. Like it just works in a certain way, and we are also influenced by how that goes. And I, I don't I I think those are like the the most interesting questions in general right like where do we come from what happens after you die you know what the hell is going on here like i i find that most fascinating and it's just interesting to see that we are pretty far away from a civilization that thinks about those things to try to understand what we are actually doing here um so that's a bit of a ramble but like that's that's eventually where i ended up kind of like in the middle politically and more <laughs> into this stuff just to uh Mm. Yeah, I, I just know that other people don't know more than me. So mm. it's like an endless research in life, I'd say. Yeah. Um, you and I just don't trust verified together and our understanding yeah. of things as well, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> well, we, because um, I don't want to um, drag the show out too long, Bram, although I feel like we could talk for another four hours. Um, well, that's so... <laughs> always the case with any Bitcoin. <laughs> it is, it is. Yeah. yeah but we, we got uh, we got stuff to do, right? Um, yeah. Especially just before the weekend. Um. We usually end our show with a little bit of a challenge for our guests. Nothing too fancy. We want to prove the saying Ian actually said earlier in the show that all roads actually lead to Bitcoin or eventually end up there. So we're going to give you a word uh, and you have to come up with either an association to, you know, bridge a gap to Bitcoin. It can be a personal story of yours or if you, oh, have, that. Okay. If you have nothing on your mind, you could also just say like, oh yeah, you could buy these fake with Bitcoin. Um, and we thought the word of the day for you is, uh, is it pronounced easel, Ian? Easel, the yeah. yeah. The it's thing behind, behind you. you, not not the, the donkey. Easel. Yeah. Um, how does that relate back to Bitcoin? <laughs> All right. Um, how the easel? Well, I think the easel is a tool for you, so actually, I bought this for my uh, girlfriend because she made. I cannot show you the paintings, but she made painting paintings, 
and she first painted on the floor here <laughs> and we have a wooden floor so she had like all this plastic everywhere like all these trash bags and she was putting the canvases on and she was like painting there and i thought like oh sweetie like this is not i don't know i don't think this is relaxing <laughs> you know and uh, so i eventually bought the 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 easel for her and um yeah i think i the, the first associated word i thought of as a tool and i think bitcoin is a tool just like money is a tool right and that's also well if you talk about another podcast you know the what is money podcast this is the question right and i think we mentioned it before that what most people think of money is not money the paper is a currency it's not money right um and and when you go back to the definition and i love i love that definition it's like money is a technology through which we exchange value with each other right if you do something for me that represents a certain type of value and because we don't barter anymore it's that value should be transferable with something and and so i see money as a technology as a tool for us to exchange that value and it should be as honest as possible so we can have a human connection about the agreement that we make about the value of what you do for me or what i do for you so that's how I think an easel as a tool relates back to Bitcoin as a tool for exchanging value. Nice. I like it. So guys, we yet to disprove the theory that all roads lead back to Bitcoin. And <laughs> as you can uh, hear that Bram was eloquent to discuss uh, how easel relates back to Bitcoin and I like your answer. Uh, for me, um, when we decided on the side chat that Joel and I had is uh, when we decided easel, the first thing that popped in my mind was um, easel is a tool to create something beautiful, right? It's like the uh, opportunity for you to build something beautiful mm. and um, uh, provide value. Um, but that's that's the sort of road I started going down or the rabbit hole I started going down with that word. So um, you can look at things with different perspectives and come to um, different understandings of the same thing. And I think that's been sort of like the tone of our episode today, which I've thoroughly enjoyed. But before we wrap up the episode because i know we're keen to crack on with the rest of our day where can people find you on the socials and um uh what, what's the best way to contact you if they need to reach out yeah so simplest ways uh i'm on on twitter uh at bramk so b-r-a-m-k that's basically my main channel my dms are open anyone can dm me and uh yeah if you want to listen to my podcast just search bitcoin for millennials on spotify youtube Apple Podcasts, etc. Perfect. And if anyone's missed that, all the details are in the show notes. So check that out. Um, and then you can sort of uh, dive down into the Bitcoin for Millennials podcast. I highly uh, advise it. It's a very valuable channel. Uh, but Bram, thank you so much for surrendering your finite time with us here at Rabbit Hole Stories. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. You're a friend of the show and you're welcome back any time to discuss any new projects you're working on. Or you just want to come back and continue our conversation down this uh, particular rabbit hole. So thank you and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Yeah, thanks, guys. Enjoyed it too. And uh, we'll definitely be in touch. Cheers.